What's going on guys, Logan here for a new video and today I'm going to be talking about the all new Ford Mach 1 that's going to be coming out in 2020. Now a few weeks ago Ford they released a teaser trailer and if you haven't seen the teaser trailer, here it is right now. What did y'all think about that? I thought that was actually kind of cool how they had the Mustang and the SUV, they both went into that warehouse and then all of a sudden the lightning came down and it was almost like Frankenstein's creation. And then all of a sudden the new Mach 1 came speeding out of the garage, so I'm definitely curious to see what it's going to be because they're definitely taking cues from the Mustang and they're going to be morphing that into like an electric SUV, so I'm definitely curious to see what the new Mach 1 is going to be. Because I guarantee you that if it's going to be an all electric car, it's going to be a very, very fast accelerating car that I bet you they'll give a Tesla a run for its money. And if it is going to be an all electric car, I wonder if it's going to be an all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive car. And Ford announced that on one charge, you'll be able to go 300 miles, which is pretty decent if it's going to be a fast accelerating car. Now, as far as a little bit of Mach 1 history, it first came out in 1968 with the 351 Windsor. It made 250 horsepower and 355 foot-pounds of torque, while you had the option for the 7-liter 428 that produced 335 horsepower and 440 foot-pounds of torque, which is absolutely insane for those numbers for those days. As far as the second generation of the Mach 1, that was from 1971 to 73, and that was like that catfish kind of look. Now, the engine that produced the least amount of horsepower is the 302 Windsor. It produced 210 horsepower and 290 foot-pounds of torque. Now the top dog for this year had a 429 cubic inch engine. That's a 7 liter 4 barrel engine that will produce 370 horsepower along with 450 foot-pounds of torque which like I said is absolutely crazy for numbers for those days. Now in 1972 you can start to see the effects of the gas crisis because the 429 was dropped altogether and the 302 Windsor was actually detuned to have 140 horsepower and 240 foot-pounds of torque. So you're producing less horsepower, a little bit better gas mileage, but the horsepower numbers took a huge nosedive. And the horsepower drops were even worse for the third generation, and that was from 1974 to 1978. The lowest performing engine for this generation was the 2.8 liter V6 Cologne engine, and it only produced 105 horsepower, which honestly isn't a lot less from the top performing engine, which was still the 302 Windsor that produced 140 horsepower and 240 foot-pounds of torque, which in 1979 they discontinued the Mach 1 altogether until 2003. So from 2003 to 2004 they made the fourth generation of the Mach 1. This Mach 1 used the 4.6 liter 4 valve engine from the Cobra, which had many similarities even down to the same heads they used, but there were some differences such as the Mach 1 was not supercharged while the Cobra was, and the intake camshafts on the Mach 1 were actually used from the 5.4 liter Boss from Australia actually. And why they used those intake cams is because it helped a little bit better with the mid-range torque. And another thing that's kind of unique about those Mach 1s is the colors. And when you see a Mach 1 on the road, you definitely know you're looking at a Mach 1, and that's because the colors, the very unique color it uses, and from the shaker system that the old Mach 1s used, along with the 2003-2004, they still use the shaker system. And it's kind of cool because you can still see it move a little bit when you rev the engine. And as far as performance numbers, this engine produced 305 horsepower and go from 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds. And also it can run the quarter mile in 13.88 seconds, which definitely isn't bad for a Mustang in 2003-2004. So I'm definitely excited to see what the new Mach 1 is going to hold because it's going to be an all-electric Mustang-inspired SUV, so I'm definitely excited to see what it's going to end up being. Which, in the words of Raj Nair, he actually said how a Mustang-inspired crossover is certainly something that you can expect out of Team Edison, which Team Edison, they're the electric performance division, I guess, of Ford, and Raj Nair, he actually is the engineer of the Ford GT. So I really can't wait to see what the new Mach 1 is going to be and what numbers it's going to put down, and if I left out any kind of information or anything that y'all know, put it down here in the comments and I might do an update video in the future. But let me know what y'all think about the new Mach 1 and what y'all think the numbers are going to be down here in the comments. But guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.